Today we're taking a look at the Q8 e-tron. Take a look at those lights. Very nice. Very, very good. 2024. Take a look at that on the inside. And welcome everybody. We're going to try a Q8 e-tron today. Take a look at this. 2024. I'm going to start it right up. Quiet. Very quiet. Now let's get the air conditioning going because it is a very hot day today. This one's got 37 miles on it. And let's get everything ready here, set up now. Yep, that's fine. That's fine, okay. Moving my seat back as much as I can. Get a lower a little bit. We got plenty of room. There we go. It is a little tighter, obviously, than the Q7. Let's adjust my headrest now. There we go. Very nice and comfortable headrest. Uh, good amount of leg room. I say in the Q7, it felt like there was a little bit more leg room. And in the sedans, it felt like there was a little bit more leg room. It is a little bit tighter there. We got the dual monitor situation here. And I've driven in previous generation e-trons before, the 2019. They don't make the e-tron e-tron anymore. They stopped that and now the e-tron is the Q8 e-tron. So let's give it a go here and let's see how this reacts. Uh, the sound system, very nice. Even if it doesn't have the Bang & Olufsen sound system, Audi sound systems feel great. Uh, very nice. Uh, to the touch steering wheel. You got your mirror, which also has shades in the very sunny areas, or if someone's flashing at you. Also, the uh, mirrors will have both blind side uh, for safety systems, and you have your shading for the mirrors as well. And then we're gonna move this baby uh, once we put it into gear. So, that's how it looks there from the back. The sunroof panoramic. Let's open her up. It was the wrong button. There we go. Fully gonna open it now. A fair amount of fresh air is gonna go in. Perfect. And then we are going to get started. One thing that is interesting is notice that there's no normal shifter. You have this, and then as long as your foot's on the brake, we have just shifted in now. We can change whether we want to be in comfort, but we actually are in dynamic. So how much range do we have? Well, it's been a little bit of time, 253 miles there, uh, 37 miles on the car. And then we're going to play around with the sound system, of course, but for copyright reasons, unfortunately, I can't put it on there. And uh, let's get her started here. Now, one thing you will notice, maybe, is when you are driving these vehicles up to, I believe it was speeds of 22 miles per hour, there is different electronic noises that it makes to ensure that other people can hear this vehicle. But let's get her started. And the seatbelt actually just tightened up on me because we have started moving. You can hear it at higher speeds and when you're braking as well, there's gonna be brake regeneration. Oh, it looks like an SQ5 is being picked up. That's very nice. And then, we're just gonna move around. And we are getting ready for our launch, our test launch here to 50 miles per hour to see how it reacts. And then there we go. Wow, that's quiet and quick. And immediately I'm off the pedal 
it has gone. It is uh, very, yeah, it's gonna keep coasting. I think there's a setting, uh, depending on how you wanna drive it, whether uh, you'll have to brake or it automatically brakes. One pedal, that's what it is. But uh, this is just coasting right now. A very quiet ride. A lot of people have range anxiety on the e-trons, but it just depends on how you use. Like with any EV, if you're charging it every single night, like you do with your phone, there's not a single night I don't charge my phone because then I know, yes, it won't die tomorrow, but what if, for emergency reasons, suddenly I'm without a charger, uh, or probably there's gonna be a charger, you know, you can always borrow a charger off somebody, and with EVs, there's, 37,000 charging stations. So there's always gonna be a charging station unless you're in the middle of the desert in nowhere. Um, but there, there's situations, whoa, look at that. Those two Porsches, but that one in the middle was, wow. That one's worth probably a fair amount. Uh, you know, just like with your phone, charge every night. And even if you don't, there's gonna be chargers all around you. And there's more and more of these chargers being built. There is for average driving. Wow, we went over a bump and that was very smooth. That suspension was incredibly smooth. That was very, very nice. Uh, my back hurts a little bit today. So that's, I've injured myself. I fell in the shower. That's why we're not doing like a full crazy review. This one out of all the Audis, I actually know probably a little bit more of, but I have just started with Audi. So I'm no expert. I'm just like you watching this video just for fun, seeing what it's like. Uh, as a first time experience, if you've never driven an e-tron, if you've never driven an EV before, this is quite a nice one because it's a luxury. Uh, if you compare this to a Tesla, Teslas are very, very noisy. We have a perfect scenario here. Cicadas. Goodbye, cicadas. Super, super nice and quiet. It is a fast car, but it's not gonna go like super crazy. Uh, and then you do have a fair amount of room for where, where we're sitting in a crossover uh, EV SUV where, you know, smaller roof in the back there, uh, kind of like that sport back slant roof, but still a fair amount of room, especially in the back for adults or young adults or teens. It is a nice family car that if you're traveling to work and back and picking up the kids from school and then heading to the gym and the grocery store, most people drive less than 40 miles per day. So if you're topping off, you can technically use this vehicle, just 110, level one charging and be completely fine with it. So it is a vehicle that as long as you're religiously charging and you're not driving over 40 miles per day, on average, if, you, if there's a day where you have to drive 100 miles, that's fine, but just use a level two charger and you'll be set, charge it overnight. Or you can always charge with a level three charger for those rare scenarios on the highway. Uh, with the CSS plugs, you can charge at any one of those, level one, two, three, and you're completely fine. There's two power adapters that you're able to plug in for level one or level two, depending on what you have at your house. Level three is only gonna be available you know, outside of your home, but you're not gonna feel like, oh no, you know, I can't. If, if you have a long trip plan, there is a route planner in the navigation system that you're able to see exactly where all the charging stations are, and it will plan out the best uh, plan of action to try and get you to your destination as quickly as possible. So you might have more stops, but it will charge at a faster rate than if you had fewer stops and were stuck charging there for you know a longer period of time. The system does the math for you. Yes, it's not as fast as going to a gas station filling up the pump, but it's also cheaper than that. So, and you get an EV rebate, and this is where eventually all the cars are going to be EVs or most of them are going to be EVs or hybrids, mild hybrids at the very least. Uh, oh, that's nice. That's nice. When you brake and, and it just slows down to a complete halt, that's very nice. Nice and quiet, a luxurious take on an EV and it's just a classic at this point. The first generation, first year, as with any model, it did have some kinks that needed to be worked out. Now, it's just so smooth that I'm not even trying to race. Boom, immediately. We're right there at the speed limit. We're cruising. Everything's good. It's super nice. Obviously, that uses up more energy, so you don't want to be driving like that all the time, but just for a test driver, fine. 
Uh, now we're at 248 miles of range. So it depends on how you're driving, depends on the conditions, depends on if it's really hot or really cold, or if you're going up an incline or if you're towing or whatnot. EVs, there's so many different variabilities. If you have four people in the car versus two people in the car, what's the situation like? But in many of these cases, the car is going to be just completely fine for you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Someone tried to cut me off and definitely did something illegal and across three lanes there so that's why you always have to be careful and Audi's all about safety as well most of the luxury brands most car brands are now about safety where there's so many different safety systems uh, and so many different airbags throughout the vehicle uh, and and just the way the the metals designed and shaped and and all the safety testing they do with the crash test dummies it's all to ensure you have a luxury car that's also going to be there for you unfortunately if someone else is having a bad day and crashes right into you so there there's a lot of scenarios where this car is just a very nice fit. Um, that's pretty much that. I'm still learning about the trims. Obviously, there's pre Prestige as the top. You have your premium, premium plus would be your mid trim, but I don't know all the exact details. I know at the, like the when we were selling a, a couple of these pre-owned, um, at the time you had scenarios where the top, you know, you would have dual uh, pane glass, which was even nicer because it was a very, very, and we're gonna park right here next to the SQ8. Look at that SQ8, very, very nice. So there was times where you would have the dual paint glass and that was even quieter uh, than this here. One way I know it's not the top is you don't have the uh, heads up display, which some people do care about, some people don't, but in terms of this car, uh, you're gonna have it's something for everybody. If you're looking more for convenience features, if you're looking more for entertainment features, there's a lot of options. And now you also have a lot of e-trons to choose from. They started before the e-tron e-tron with the A3 e-tron. Uh, and then now there's a whole category. You got the Q4 e-tron, you have the e-tron GT, you've got sport, you got SUV, you got sedans, and there's gonna be a couple more coming out this year and next year. So you're gonna have a lot of options to go with. Uh, but anyways, let me park this vehicle, show you the exterior. And that is that from me, my friends. Thanks for watching. Again, very nice camera. So as we're moving, you can now tell but hey, we're gonna hit the we're gonna hit the wall, right? I'm doing this on purpose just to activate the sensors. That's fine. <laughs> Eventually, we'd hit it, right? And we get back, and it starts going again. So now let's get up a little bit closer to this one, and we are good at that point, as you can tell. Perfect. So just press the P there, and you are set. Very very nice car. A nice comfortable ride. Similar to Lamborghini, you're gonna have kind of this weird octagonal shape. So think of it like the baby Lambo, except the EV version, gotta love that. Stepping out. I mean, you do feel like these are the baby Lambos. Then taking a uh, look outside here. There we go, open it up. In the back room you've got from the back the e-tron logo trunk space with your sun guard you do have the kick swiping motion where maybe that works there we go yeah and from the back very nice looking car. My favorite though is the lights. And from the side, the side profile, the rims are very nice. That is pretty much that.